Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elder Marshall. Shine on me. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now and we praise you and we lift you up. You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. You're so just magnificent, God. And we just lift you up in praise. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. it is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. The Lord, some people are skittish this day because it is the Friday the 13th, Lord, but you made every day. So ain't no use of us being superstitious about anything. You're God and you're God all by yourself. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. Now, Lord, we just ask you as we get ready to study your word today that, that you just come forth and show out the Heavenly Father. Just let your word be, be just so penetrating to our hearts and our minds, dear Lord, that it will help us go just a little while longer. We give you the praise, God, and we give you the glory, and we thank you in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over this, this whole conference call, over this Facebook, over all this technology, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over this ministry, the Guiding Light ministry, Lord. We pre plead the blood over this edition of Friday Night Lights. We plead the blood, dear Lord, over every household that is going to be listening to this recording or, or, or listening to it now or listening to it later, Lord. We plead the blood over their lives, over their homes, over their families, over everything in their lives. We thank you for this, God, and we praise you right now in the mighty and sufficient name of Jesus and by the power Power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, everyone, to the God and Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Friday Night Lights edition. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. I also have a co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy of the Church of God in Christ of Faith Tabernacle. He's not here with us tonight. Uh, he is enjoying uh, a night out with uh, his wife, Lady Ty. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Lady Ty. Amen, amen. So we're going to get into this word tonight. Uh, as you know, on last week, we started the series on dealing with being overcomers. And, and we started this series uh, talking about uh, um, uh, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse, um, see, let me get my verse right. Verse 4, yeah, chapter John, chap, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, and it reads, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then we, 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 we went from there and we dealt with the, the behavior of the, the, the overcomer. And, and, and over in the 12th chapter of Romans, we got down to that verse where it says, be not overcome, uh, of evil, but overcome evil with good. And then we had a revelation passage um, that we were dealing with. Revelation, uh, I think it's, uh, let me get my verse right. I can't never get my verse right in Revelation. Um, let me see. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm looking right at it, but I can't. I think it's verse uh, chapter 12, verse 11. Chapter 12, verse 11. And chapter 12, verse 11 says, and they overcame and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they they love not their lives unto death. And so 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 this this is about being an overcomer, being an overcomer. And so tonight 
um, the Lord has led me to look at Psalms 46. And, and, and the title uh, of this lesson is, as overcomer, we need to understand God got it. God got us. Coming down particular, make it real personal. God got me. God got you. God got us. Oh, hallelujah. So so let's turn, if you will, to Psalms 46. And, and um, the key verse, the key verse in Psalm 46 is verse 10. Psalm 46, verse 10. And, and, and it says this. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty and powerful verse that, that we're going to be looking at tonight, dealing with the fact that, that God tells us to be still and know that I am God. Be still and, and, and understand that God is the one in control. I, I love the, the, the Amplified Bible. It says, let be and be still, recognizing and understanding that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Oh, we have to understand and realize that God is the one in control he got us. Many of us, many of us deal with, with a lot of, of anxiety. We, 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 we face stress and anxiety and worries of this world, but God is there to help us. We can place all of that in his hands. He, we, he, he doesn't, we don't have to carry it around with us all the time. What what causes this stress? Well, well, and this anxiety. Well, some people have got spiders and, and snakes and earthquakes and work and school and homework, tests, darkness, lightning, you know, typhoons, hurricanes, threats of war, driving and, and all relationships, all kind of problems in their family, illness, even doing public speaking, all of this causes stress moving, getting married, doing this, finances, all kind of concerns for the future. All of this has the ability to create anxiety and stress. This seems to be a part of life. The question is, is that even though stress and anxiety can be a part of life, the question is, is how can we choose to respond to these, these times of anxiousness and anxiety and stress. Well, throughout the Bible, the Bible commands us and teach us not to worry. Have no fear. Don't be anxious. And some people have said that there are so many verses in the Bible on this topic that you could read a different verse every day of the year. I, I, and I, I'm going to tell you, I can't verify all of that, it, it, if that's true or not. But I know that God repeats this message to us over and over and over again throughout the Bible. Don't worry. Have no fear. Don't be anxious. God, he knows us as human and he knows our frailty. Our nature, natural tendency is to see things with our eyes and not with the eyes of faith. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We don't see things the way we're supposed to do. We're always looking at the reality or the fact of things, but we have to see things in the eyes of faith. And so God continues to remind us over and over again, don't fear, don't worry. And don't be anxious. And it's interesting that some Psalms, uh, not Psalms, but Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 says, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That this this is a weight 
we, we were never designed to carry. We, we were not designed to carry all of this anxiety and stress. It not only drains our emotions and our emotional energy, but it, it can make us sick and cause health problems. Some, some fear is natural and keeps us safe, like, you know, the fear of snakes. You, you, you need to be afraid of snakes. Don't, don't be going up to no cobra and letting them bite you, you know, or, or, or the fear of heights, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you ain't going to be getting me in no airplane talking about jump. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, so, so those are some examples, but, but when we hold on to stress and anxiety and fear, when our thoughts are consumed by weary, this is not how God designed us to live. So today, as we look at this text, we're going to see how to face life with God's help. And, and, and let me say this. Let me say this before I go any further. Let me say this before I go any further. I have to give a disclaimer. The Bible has much to say about how we should handle anxiety and stress. But there are some people that need professional help. God has given us his word to guide us and to help us. But, but he he has also given us doctors and medicine to help make life better as well. And there are many people, many people who struggle with anxiety or depression due to chemical imbalances and need medication. And there are others who are dealing with traumatic experiences. They, they've been through some stuff in their life and they need professional counseling and some medication to help them process and learn how to cope with what is happening. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm making it plain. I'm not going to throw you under the bus and say it's just you, that, you got to go figure this thing out. No, you can get medical help for anxiety and depression and all this chemical imbalance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so anxiety and fear and stress can also be caused by spiritual influence. And I, I got to bring this up. I got to bring this up. I'm talking about being an overcomer and God got us. So we need to be aware of what's going on. And if, and if you are a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, then what what we have, we're, we're covered. We're covered. God got us. God got us. And, and that's what this message is about today. But if you have never placed your faith in Jesus Christ and to surrender your life to him, then you are on your own when it comes to fighting these spiritual forces. For the word of God tells us that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers and high places. So, so I'm, I'm here to tell you, you need some help. You need Jesus. So give your life to Jesus. He's the one that can help you and bring peace and love and joy into your life. He's the one and only one who can carry your load and, and, and handle your worry and your stress and your anxiety and fear. Oh, I can hear him say it this way. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Oh, hallelujah. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And when you come to Jesus, you will find the help you need in your time of stress, in your time of weary, and in your time of fear. Oh, hallelujah. And so, so we, we need to understand this. We, we need to grab a hold of this. So now let's, 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 let's look at this from this. And the Bible tells us that in, 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 in this passage of scripture, uh, Psalms 46 he starts off and he tells us, he says, look, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be moved, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though 
though, wa though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountain shake with its swelling, Selah. Oh, I love that Selah. I love Selah. Because Selah, you know, uh, uh, this song is like a musical song, so it's a pause that you're supposed to take in the music. You know, I, I have an old thing that says this, you know, and I've said this in music. You just can't have just notes all across. Every now and then in music, you need to take a rest, a pause. And and, and this this is a musical a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, psalm where people would sing, so you're supposed to just take a pause. But but Selah not only talk about taking a pause, but Selah also says think about it, think 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 calmly, think of of that that which I just said. Oh hallelujah! Let me go on in the scripture. I I got off, but I got, I'm going on. Verse four. Verse four says, "There is a river whose streams." shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. He or she shall not be moved. God shall help her. Just at the break of dawn, the nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Ah, uh, Selah. Oh, hallelujah. Come before the works of the Lord. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. He makes war to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And again, Selah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause and calmly think of that. God, God, God's got us. He's got us. And, and so as we look at this text, as we look at this text, the, 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 this, this song sets a tone and a theme right there in that first verse. God, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. That Hebrew word trouble, that, that he, he uses means pressed in. When we pressed in on every side, that there, there's a saying that when we are under pressure, when we are, are being squeezed, that's what's in, that is what inside of us is going to come out of us because it's going to get squeezed out of us like a tube of toothpaste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to come out of us. And the psalmist say that God is our refuge, our place of safety, our, our security, our mighty fortress. Regardless of what is happening in the world, there's still the strength and the power and the might of God on our side. Yes, hallelujah. When you're under pressure, you learn that you live, move, and have your being in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to his name. And so as we look at this this this, this psalm, it has three sections that, that we're going to look at, and each one is separated by that Selah. So the first section that we're going to look at is God helps us in a time of trouble. I got to read the scripture again. It's just, it just so good to just keep reading this scripture. Verses one through three, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we shall not fear, even though the earth is removed and though the mountains be carried into the sea and though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God is our help in trouble. God is our help in trouble. 
this verse deals with these first three verses deal with natural disasters. And, and this verse seems to describe these natural events like earthquakes and landslides, typhoons and all that volcano. All of that. These, these are example of large scale disasters. Oh, what have we been through these last few months? We had Hurricane Harvey. We had Hurricane Irma. We have Hurricane Maria. We got Hurricane Nate. Then on top of that, we got earthquakes down in 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 in, in Mexico. And then we got fires over in California. Big, big fires where people's homes are just being destroyed. These are natural disasters. And and and, and then in the midst of all of that, you know. This stuff is just going on, and we know there's some politics behind people getting help and all that. I'm not going to hear to complain about all that like the people in Puerto Rico. I'm going to pray for them. As we started this lesson or started this session, somebody prayed for me and had me on their mind. So I'm going to pray for them and have them on my mind because I know that the God we serve is a very present help in a time of of trouble. When, when you can't go to nobody else, when you can't get help from anybody else, you can get help from God. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. Yes, he's our refuge. He's the one that's going to be there with us. And so we should not fear because God is our refuge and strength. Yes, there are things that are beyond our control, but my God, my Lord, my Savior, he's there and is still in command of the winds and the waves and the sea and all the elements of nature. God is still in control. Oh, if I had somebody here to, to yell back at me, I would tell you, say it with me. God is still in control. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So therefore, mm -hmm, God is my refuge and my strength. And I, I can, I can have confidence and put my confidence in him and put my trust in him because he's going to help in a time of trouble. Yeah, we we had to deal with, with Hurricane Nate here in Alabama. He didn't come and destroy as bad as Irma or as bad as Harvey or as bad as, as, as um, Maria. But when he came, he came with rains and he came with floods and, and and then we even had tornadoes not here but there were tornadoes that came afterward but in all of this we know that God was still in control God got us God got us he can help us in a time of trouble the next section the next section section four uh, verses four through seven that deals with God helping us in a time of conflict. Listen, listen to, listen to the verse. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations rage, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, and the earth melted. This this second section is, is dealing with God helping us in a time of conflict. This, this speaks of the, the, the violent conflict taking place in the world. The nations are raging, the kingdoms were moved. Here the picture uh, 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 uh. The pictures of the nations are in an uproar and the kingdom falling and, and all of this, this, this stuff taking place. It, it, it sounds like today, doesn't it? North Korea, Iran, the United States, Syria, all of these different places and all of this uproar. We got ISIS and, and, and the Taliban and all of them 
the stuff is just in an uproar. He says, but even though if the nations fall apart, even though society deteriorates, God is with his people. God is with us. He's our refuge. Mankind seems to be falling apart, but we who know the Lord, we who call on the name of Jesus, we who are covered in the blood of the Lamb, we who are Christians don't have to be falling apart because all of this stuff going on. We can stand confidently without fear because God is our refuge. God is our strength because Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God got us. Oh, hallelujah. And the last part, the last section, God is our refuge. God, God is God. And whom else can we trust? And so we've looked at God helps us in a time of conflict and, and God it, 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 it helps us in a time of trouble. But the reason he can help us in a time of trouble and in a time of conflict is because God is God. Listen to the verses starting at verse 8. He says, Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. He breaks the bow and, 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 and oh no, he makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear into two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. This, this psalm in verse 8 refers back to the times of trouble mentioned in the first section and the time of natural disaster that was displayed, that, that, that displayed God's power, that he is almighty God over creation. And he says in this verse eight, he says, behold, the, the works of the Lord who has made desolation in the earth. Look at what God can do. Do you, do you have power over these forces of nature like our God does? Oh no, but he has that power. Verse 9, he says, he, he, he refers to the times of conflict, like in the second section of this psalm. Even when the nations are raging, God makes them cease. God will bring all wars and all conflict to an end very soon. Oh, hallelujah. Soon and very soon. For a, for a time, God is allowing the war. He's allowing the conflict to continue to rage on the earth. This is all happening according to prophecy because we know it says there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. But there's a time that is coming when God will bring all of these conflicts to an end and bring all of humanity before himself for final judge. And so the conclusion of this matter is this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. There is only one true and living God, and he is the creator of heaven and earth. There is no other God. He has 
power to control all of the creation. He can control the weather. He can control this earth. He can control the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, the galaxy, and the whole universe. He has the power and authority over all people and all nations and all governments. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. The day is coming soon and very soon when the kingdom of God will be the only kingdom. We will tear down all these other kingdoms and establish his eternal kingdom. And he will be exalted among the nations. And he will be exalted here on the earth. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. He is Lord and he is Lord alone. He is our God. He is the one that is with us. He is our refuge. We find safety and shelter and security in him. So, be still. May your heart be at peace. Because the one who controls all creations, who controls the nation, he's with us. And he is our refuge. So don't be anxious. Hallelujah about anything but in every situation by prayer and supplication make your request known unto God with thanksgiving and the peace of God which passes and transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Mm -mm -mm. So do not fear. For God is with us. Don't be in despair, for he is God, and he will strengthen us and help us and uphold us with his righteous hand. God is good. His acts of giving are good. The gifts that he gives us are perfect, and he will work all things together for good for those that love him and who are called according to his purpose. We can safely place our complete trust in this good and merciful God. And we can trust him with all our lives, with our families, with our jobs, with our finances, with our ministry, with any of the cares of the world we now can face the stress and the anxiety and the weary of this world with God's help. We can place all of that in his hands. We don't have to carry it around with us. We can be still and know that he is God and that he got us. God God, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you got us. In a time of trouble, in a time of conflict, you got us. We can face our anxieties, our fears, and our worries because you got us. We are overcomers. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We are conquerors, more than conquerors, in you, O oh Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for keeping us. And thank you for blessing us. Thank you, God, that you got us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I end the recording on Facebook and on the conference call, I like to get those that don't know Jesus 
as their Lord and Savior, an opportunity to give your life to Christ. All that I'm talking about, God got us. We, you can't do this by yourself. You need the power of the Lord Jesus in your life. You need the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Because if you got him in you, you can truly say that you're an overcomer. And great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so, we pray the prayer of salvation based on Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 9 and 10 says, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Verse 13 says in that chapter 10, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let us go pray and call on the name of the Lord. Pray with us. Dear Lord Jesus, we come confessing and believing in our heart that you died for our sins and that God raised you from the dead. Lord, please forgive us for all of our sins and come into our hearts. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and my Savior. Lead, guide, and direct me from this day forward. And be my help in a time of trouble, in a time of conflict. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for being God and being our Lord and our Savior. For saving our souls and making us whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Facebook, we're going to get off and we're going to go into the conference call. Uh, if you want to join us on the conference call for comments and discussion of the word a little bit more, turn uh, call in at 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531. Thank you for being with us here on the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study on the Friday Night Light broadcast with Pastor Mark McCoy. Goodbye, Facebook.